hello what's up in this tutorial i'll show you the very simple steps that i add to photos after doing skin retouching remember i have a number of tutorials about doing skin retouching about how to do it from the very start the very end and all that but what happens after you have done skin retouching what should you look out for after doing skin retouching to your images and what should you add to your photos after you have done skin retouching and you feel like that is you have nailed the skin retouching so this story is for you and if at all you haven't hit the like button i just request that you hit the like the like button because this is going to be an eye opener for you and you can as well add the same ingredients or the same steps to your images in photoshop so right now this is the image i already did a retouch and it is a master class and it is beginner friendly and if at all you haven't watched it check through the videos on the channel and you you'll be able to find it along so the very first thing I, I look out for is you can see right now this image it looks amazing but after doing skin retouching the very first thing I tend to do is adding shape or dimension to the image and by doing that I mean I add shape or dimension by dodging and burning the shadows remember most often or often times when you're doing skin retouching we tend to have flat images especially us that use frequency passion to do skin retouching so just want to get back and add that nice and beautiful shape or dimension to your photos by dodging and burning the image remember we have two techniques of dodging and burning i know it is the same technique but one is a global and the other one is local so local is the micro dodging and burning whereby you zoom in and you brighten specific small areas of the image and for the global you look at a bigger area where light is falling and you enhance those different light variations depending on how bright or how dark they are to bring back or make or add shape or dimension to your images so we are going to be doing the global dodging and burning so like i said the image may turn out to look flat after i have done skin retouching on it so what we have to do we are just going to come to curves and create a curves adjustment layer so make click in the middle and just brighten up a little bit not too much but slightly until it looks a little bit overexposed and now make sure the white mask is selected hit ctrl command i on the keyboard and you're going to name this dodge remember we just brightened so we're going to be painting with this bright effect on bright areas of the image to enhance them or add shape or dimension to those areas and we're going to come back down here and come to curves and now click in the middle and drag down to darken the image slightly close this make sure the white layer mask is selected and we want to hide this effect by hitting ctrl command i on the keyboard to hide that if effect double click right there and i'm going to name that into burn so we just want to come and get the brush tool this is going to be a soft round brush so just come under the brushes and get a brush tool and now the hardness has to be at zero percent or past at 100 the flow we are going to be using a flow of around 10 percent yeah 10 percent make sure white is on the foreground and in order to reset just click on these two small boxes and you have black and red and you don't get white on top use x on the keyboard and the brush is going to be white in color so remember in photoshop black reveals black hides and white reveals so we just want to reveal what was hidden behind this black mask remember we brightened this image and we darkened some areas of the image so we're going to come using this white brush and click on this black layer mask. So using a white brush, we just want to brighten and darken specific areas of the image. And as I'm doing this, I make sure the image is not over zoomed in like this. I make sure it is on a reasonable zoom. So I think this looks good. So I'm just going to use the open and close brackets on the keyboard to adjust the brush depending on the size I want. So what I'm going to do for the dodge, I'm just going to be painting on the bright areas of the image to enhance them or make them look uh, better. So just come to the cheekbone and also paint right there and come to this other side and also paint right there on the cheek and I can come and enhance right on the forehead. I'm going to come and paint on the chin 
right here come to this nice beautiful color bone and just paint right there and also paint on the shoulder right there on those highlights right there so after doing that i'm just going to i could come and look for other bright areas for example right here on the eye and just enhance this area or the eyeshadow to make it even pop a little bit more just like that so after doing that I could come and also enhance right here on the top lip and also on the bottom lip to make it also have shape or dimension so that is for the dodging and what do the same for the burning so burning is enhancing the shadow areas so using the same brush white brush painting on a black mask increase on the size because that is a smaller area and now paint on the dark areas just like that and come to this other side and also paint on that area come to this cheekbone and also paint right there and this other side and come to the forehead and also you are basically trying to sculpt or add shape or dimension to as a model's face so i know this looks a little bit awkward and looks weird so if at all i'm to turn this on and off you can see it looks too much and looks really awkward but it has the shape or dimension so like i forgot to tell you if at all you want to eliminate the effect from a given area just switch your brush to black and you can eliminate or delete the effect using a black brush so if at all you feel like the effect is too much you can just come to the opacity and simply dial down the effect i think that looks fine for the burn before after and come to also the dodge layer and also drop down the opacity to uh, the one of your preference so i'm just going to put these two in a group and hit ctrl command g on the keyboard to group them and this is going to be for my dodge and burn so this is the before after before after and when you feel like it is too much for your liking you can come and also drop down the overall opacity for your dodging and burning so before after before after now the shape has that nice and before dimension so next thing i tend to do is coming to the eyes right here so what i want to do i'm going to create a stamp visible layer by hitting shift alternate command e on the keyboard so these are more like the steps I do after doing skin retouching. After creating this stamp visible, I'm just going to come and create a new blank layer right here. And I'm going to zoom into the eyes. And as you can see, we have some kind of veins within the eyes of our model. So I'm just going to come to the brushes, rather on the tools right here and get my spot healing brush tool. So if at all I want to eliminate uh, these veins the best way possible remember usually the mode is going to be in normal but if at all i want to eliminate the dark veins in the white area of the eye i'm just going to come and choose lighten so what this does as you're clicking right here it eliminates the dark areas remember it only wants the brush to be in a clean environment so that's why you have selected the mode as lighted, meaning anything dark is going to be eliminated. So what I'm going to do, make sure sample oleas is selected and content aware is also activated right there. And now I'm just going to come and start painting, clicking over those veins to eliminate them. So not every vein has to be eliminated, but we tend to remove those prominent veins from the eyes, just like that and i hope i think it is doing uh, a good job so come to the second eye and also you can see it is just eliminating the dark parts and leaving the bright parts so just come and eliminate those right there so i think this looks good for the eyes and now you can see that we have just eliminated the veins let me just before after before after and that is a very nice step so next thing i tend to do after doing skin retouching so the very first thing was dodging and burning the second i look at the eyes and i eliminate those veins so the next thing i can come and do is enhancing the dark areas or the blacks in the image 
and by enhancing those i mean you be darkening specific areas for example eyebrows mascara and maybe some eyeshadow if at all it is black in color you can enhance or darken it even more in photoshop after doing skin retouching remember as you're pulling up the shadows we tend to make some black areas gray in the process so i'm just going to come right here to my adjustments and come to selective color remember we just want to enhance the blacks or the dark areas in the image so come to the drop down and look for the blacks and simply move this black slider slightly up two looks good and remember we just want to hide this effect from affecting the overall image hit ctrl command i on the keyboard to hide that effect come the brushes and get your brush and this time around we're just going to be using a very low flow which is of around three percent make sure white is on top or on the foreground so you just want to reveal what is hidden behind the black mask so just come and you can come and start enhancing or darkening uh, the eyebrows or you can even do the same for the lashes just like that and this is going to be enhancing those areas and making it look better so you can see this is just a slight thing but it has really enhanced it is very subtle and it is really effectful so or effective so if at all you feel like you want to apply it on the hair you can just come and start painting through the hair if at all the model has hair and that will get you all to get the job done so you can as well come and enhance lipstick or even enhance the eyeshadow to pop even more by simply coming right here down and coming and creating a vibrance and saturation layer and just turning up the saturation slightly and also turning up the vibrance to around two you can even take the vibrance up even more to around nine and now make sure this is selected hit control command i on the keyboard this time around we're just going to be using a flow of around 20 percent and using a white brush come and start painting in the areas you want to enhance so just come and make the eyeshadow pop just like that and the more you paint the more the effect is is going to be adding to the image so just come and enhance that eyeshadow you can come and also make the lip or the lipstick more pronounced just like that just look at this just look at this before after before after it is very subtle but as the effect you see before after and when you feel like you just want to enhance that even more you can duplicate this by hitting ctrl command j to enhance that effect even more so let's see what i have just done to this image from the start of this tutorial and we see if at all we have created a difference from the original and what we have right now so hold down the alternate and click right here this is the before after before after before after you can see it is very subtle but it really makes a difference yeah so basically those are the very small things i tend to do and other thing i may tend to do is zooming in and looking for those blemishes i may have missed out here and there and finally after retouching the best thing is to save a very nice and sharp image you just don't want to waste our energy or the effort we have been applying trying to retouch the image so you just want to export the image so it doesn't change in color and we have a very sharp and crisp image after doing skin retouching and all these other ingredients onto the image so we're just going to come right here to file export and come to export as so just want to embed every effect that we have been up able to apply to the image by coming to the format and selecting jpeg of course then image size and scale i'm going to leave everything scale 100 percent resample remember i just want the image to be slightly sharper after retouching it so just come to save resample by cubic sharper canvas size leave it at the default and color space convert srgb and also embed the color profile because 
when you don't do this it tends to change in color when you post it or print it out so make sure you also embed color profile and convert it to srgb and simply hit export and you can rename this to whatever you want so i could name this to valentine's because tomorrow is valentine's and simply hit save in order to save this image so this has been a video about what you should do after doing skin retouching in photoshop and if at all you have found it helpful don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if at all you have been watching and haven't subscribed ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating